For example, if I took the sensor and stuck it in this bowl of water, as I move up and down, I can track the level of the water and let's say when the water gets low, I can notify the computer and tell it to turn on an LED that's or a screen or an alarm or whatever to notify me that the water is low. The way it works is it has these power pins, power bars across from the top to the bottom. And then it has also ground bars. As you know, power flows through the power line to the ground line and creates a circuit. As there is more water touching the sensor, water is conductive, allowing more electricity to flow through the circuit lowering the resistance. Because air isn't very conductive, and electricity doesn't flow well in air, thankfully, the more air there is touching the sensor, the more resistance there will be. So using that, the more water there is, the less resistance there's gonna be. So as the electricity gets stronger and stronger and stronger, we know there is more water contact and we can up the value. So if there was no water touching this at all, it would have barely any electricity flow, maybe just a little bit through like the water droplets that are left here, but not much. Here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need your water level sensor. You're gonna need three cables. I went with red, black, and yellow. These are male to female. And then you're gonna need an Arduino. Take your cables and plug them into the right port. So we're gonna go red into five volt, which is right here. Black into ground as always and then yellow is going to go into A0. We're gonna want an analog port, not a digital port. Analog ports give more detail in the description, where digital ports is just a high or low one or zero. Then we're gonna go and plug in yellow into S. As you can see on the sensor, it says S plus and minus. So red is gonna go into plus because red is always positive, and then black is going to plug into negative. Now you're ready to go. And now you can see a red light on it, meaning you have power. We're gonna do the testing on this actual water bowl. It's ha about half filled with water. And as we stick the temperature sensor in or out, we'll see the values go up and down. Now, as always, open up your Arduino editor. Make sure that you are on the right board. So go to port, make sure your port is the one with the Arduino in it. Make sure you choose the right board. I'm using an Arduino Uno, so I'm gonna choose Arduino Uno. Once that's set up, you're gonna see setup and loop. Setup is the things you do right before the application starts and loop is while the application is running. Before setup, we have a couple things we need to do. The first thing is we're gonna to have to declare the port where the water sensor is plugged in. That's going to be A0. Right under that, you're going to add int value and this is where we're gonna hold the level of water. In setup, as always, you have to set up your console. So we're gonna go serial.begin and put a number in here. I usually go 9600. In your loop, you're gonna to have to set that value equal to analog read. If you were using a digital sensor, you would just do digital read, it's pretty simple. And then in here we're gonna put read, which is our A0 sensor. Under that we're gonna do a bit of a big if statement, so I'm just gonna write it out and then I'll explain it to you guys. All right, so this if statement, what we're saying is, if the value is under 300, print out empty. If it's between 300 and 500, then it's low. It's be if it's between 500 and 600, it's medium, and then anything over 600 is high. These values don't really matter. I kind of made them up just out of testing it out and seeing what makes sense to me. You can really change just anything you want. You don't have to make it empty low. You can actually like measure the, the distance of the water on the temperature sensor, like how much is this? This is one centimeter or whatever, and then you can have it equal in the computer to one centimeter and actually have like a descriptive number. But I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, hey, is there water in the bowl or is there no water in the bowl? Or is there a lot of water in the bowl? Just figuring that out. Then you're gonna put a delay. This can be whatever you want. I like to put low numbers so I can get constant updates, but you can make this 10 seconds, you can make it one second, it doesn't really matter. Now all you gotta do is compile it, make sure you have no errors, Everything looks good, we're gonna upload it. Let's take our temperature sensor. We're gonna have to first go into tools, serial monitor, and when you open that, you'll see it's printing out empty a bunch of times because nothing is touching my sensor. I'm gonna take my sensor and slowly insert it into the water. And as I'm putting it into the water, you can see it going between medium, low, high, just jumping around. As I'm pulling it out, it's going to low, empty, medium, and right at the bottom, it's gonna hit high. There we go. I'm just gonna rest it here. Usually you would have it like secured onto the side of the bowl for accurate reading, but I'm just gonna have it loose. So now what's happening, as I explained earlier, is those power pins and ground pins 
are letting electricity flow through the water. So there's actually electricity right now flowing through the water. It's a very small number, it wouldn't hurt me, but it's something to know. The more water there is, the more electricity is gonna flow through the water and touch the ground pin. So actually right here where the pins are, there's electricity going between these. Now if I pull it out, air is just not as conductive as water. It's actually not very conductive at all. So it's not gonna let electricity just freely flow between the pins. Now when I lower it back into the water, you'll see it goes medium. When I pull it out, you see it goes low. Once it dries, it goes full empty. Low is usually when there's a bit of residue left. Like you see low, 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 low. I'm gonna shake it a bit, I'm gonna tap it on the bowl. And now it goes back down to empty. Now let's take this one step further. Here's the more complex setup. I have the dog bowl here with the water temperature sensor inside of it. I have a buzzer here that's gonna make a really annoying sound when there's no water. And then I also have an LED on the board that I didn't really wire up, I just kinda stuck it in there. If you look at the code here, what's gonna happen is we have a buzzer and an LED. We declare those at their outputs. And then down here we go and have a really annoying and complicated if statement that pretty much says, hey, if water is empty, beep and buzz like crazy. If it's low, just kind of tell me. And then if it's medium or high, we're good to go. Now when I plug it in, you're gonna hear the super annoying sound. It's gonna go nuts. So what we're gonna do is just get some water here. I don't know if there's actually gonna be enough. I'm just gonna pour it into the bowl. It's still too low, so I'm just gonna try and find some more water in my room. So right now you can see it's printing out. Right now you can see it's printing out high because we're pretty deep in the bowl right now and there's actually a shit ton of water in the bowl. But as I remove the sensor, it's gonna start dropping down just like earlier. But this time it's going to freak out and beep and scream at me depending on the water level. So right now it's kind of chilling out right here. Just one beep once in a while. And as it empties, I actually put a lot of work into these videos to try and be descriptive, but also fun. So if you do enjoy them, if you learned something, maybe leave it a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be bringing a bunch of more of these videos up on the channel. And uh, if there's any sensors you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. See you in the next one.